Hello friends, this is Sandy and I'm going to give you my very first ever tutorial on coloring. I set up a little contraption with my camera. I'm not really sure how well it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. I am going to um, show you some shading techniques and the way that I cast my shadows on my images. Uh, we're going to start off with the typewriter on little Snoopy. And what I typically do with objects like this, if it's an object that I'm going to start um, reserving a highlight space on because I forget by the time I get to the lighter area I will start with my lightest color. If I'm not going to reserve any white I'll often start with the darkest color because then it just makes the blending go faster but for this image I want a white highlight along the top of this piece and along this top edge. I don't know if you can see that but I want those highlights to stay there so I'm going to color with my warm gray one marker to hold that space. I'm going to jump now to the shadow and that would be the darkest part which is the furthest away from the light and if the light is coming this direction then the shadow is going to be all along the bottom of the typewriter right down here and I will only put a little bit of the darkest color in there and there's also this piece sticks out so there's going to be a little dark shadow under there that was my warm gray 7 marker and now I'm going to take the W5, warm gray 5, the next one up that I have and I'm going to lay it down right next to where the warm gray 7 was and I don't have to worry about being really tidy with it um, this one is a little closer to the shadow so I add a little bit more of the warm gray 5 right in, in that little piece and leave that one dark I go then to my warm gray 3 and then we add another layer as this moves up on the typewriter and I'm careful to leave a little bit of that area for the warm gray 1 that I started out with to stay there. Now you notice that as I scrunch over top of the marker color it starts to blend and that's the joy of Copics that they just kind of blend on their own so now I'm going to take that last last bit of highlight and I'm going to hang on to that white edge at the very top but I can go over the whole thing with this and it will make a dark typewriter. Now I can go back in if I want and add some more dark color to it because for me the, the typewriter isn't quite dark enough yet and just be liberal with the color if you feel like it you know pretty forgiving and then just keep blending it as you go with with different shades of the same color or of a different color for the little knob on his uh, typewriter I'm going to make it kind of a gold knob but it's going to have some brown shadows to it so I'm taking a E33 uh, the color on it is called sand and then the, uh, the rest of that knob is going to be Y17 which is my very favorite yellow, golden yellow, my favorite yellow marker because just adding something with a pop of color will really help. I'm going right over top of the brown so it's blending the two of them together and at the end just in case this is fuzzy I'll show you an, a still shot of the actual image so you can see it better in case the uh, video camera is a little bit funky now I'm going to take, um, for coloring Snoopy, I'm going to color a little bit with my E000, Pale Fruit Pink. Uh, this is a sketch marker. This color, I believe, does not come in the, uh, the chows, which is what I typically use. So I have a few of my markers in the sketch type. Now I just add a tiny bit of shadow on Snoopy. It does not have to be much. It can be really, really subtle. But it's nice to see what just that little bit does. It makes him look a little more polished, a little more finished, because he's a white dog and he doesn't really have color in there. So this sort of leaves me some room to add just a little bit more color to my image. I'll add a little bit to the paper as well. I kind of like to leave, you know, to tie the image together with a little bit of common color throughout. And hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more of the coloring I did on Snoopy when I take a still to show you. So Now I want to add a little bit of ground underneath of him. And this is where people get very confused and they get all very worried 
about making it blend or making it look natural. I add just a little bit. You don't have to add much. It can be just a little line like that. If you use a light enough color, you don't have to use a blender on it um, to smoosh it out. This color is a little bit on the, the punchy side, and I kind of like it, but I'm going to go over just the edge of it to pull a little bit of color out and soften it just a tidge because that color, and it's a B00, uh, which is frost blue, was the blue that I used. It's just a little stronger than than what I'd like for a very, very light color because I wanted about the same color uh, intensity as the shadow that I used in Snoopy. So there you have it. There's my image. I will try to splice in a still photo of this just in case you don't get to see it too well in this video. So please give me feedback. I'd love to know how this worked and whether it was uh, viewable for you. And I will see you all soon. Thanks. Bye.